And now we turn to that explosive new book from Ronan Farrow. Catch and Kill documents Farrow's reporting on the Harvey Weinstein scandal and the accusation of rape against Matt Lauer. Ronan is here for his first broadcast interview about the book, which has already generated heated denials from Lauer and NBC News. But Lindsay Davis starts us off with the details. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. His bombshell reporting earned Ronan Farrow a Pulitzer Prize. Now in his new book, he names names and reveals sources from his investigation into Harvey Weinstein. It reads like a Hollywood script of espionage and sabotage, a high-stakes game of whack-a-mole where spies, investigators, and Weinstein allies allegedly work clandestinely to silence witnesses, ruin reputations, and intimidate whistleblowers. In Ronan Farrow's upcoming new book, Catch and Kill, the investigative reporter details what he says were powerful attempts to stifle the reporting that ultimately sparked the explosive scandal and the Me Too movement. In August of 2017, Farrow says he thought he had enough of a story, including secretly recorded audio of Weinstein provided by an alleged victim willing to be named, Ambra Gutierrez. Yesterday was a kind of aggressive for me. I, why and did yesterday you, you touched my breast. Oh, come on, I'm used to that. Farrow also says he had an accuser in shadow, anonymous corroborating witnesses, and he believed he could convince some accusers to go on the record. But instead of airing the story or encouraging more reporting, Farrow writes he was told by NBC News executives to pause on all reporting, cancel interviews, and according to Farrow, NBC News President Noah Oppenheim questioned whether Harvey Weinstein's comments on the tape were even newsworthy, reportedly saying, I don't know what it proves. He's trying to get rid of her. People say a lot of things when they're trying to get rid of a girl like that. Harvey Weinstein grabbing a lady's breasts a couple of years ago? That's not national news. Farrow kept going, ultimately taking his reporter to the New Yorker magazine. Farrow says he was told by Noah Oppenheim that he could take it elsewhere, saying, right now we can't run this. Go with God. The story won a Pulitzer Prize. This week, in a memo to NBC News staff, Chairman Andy Lack maintained that when Farrow presented his reporting to NBC, he didn't have one victim or witness on the record, saying Farrow simply didn't have a story that met our standard for broadcast. Then, with the Me Too movement in full swing, another stunning fall. Good morning, breaking news overnight. Matt Lauer fired for what NBC said was sexual misconduct. The former NBC employee behind the complaint, Brooke Nevels, spoke out to Farrow for the first time, accusing Lauer in graphic detail of raping her in a hotel room while at the 2014 Sochi Olympics on assignment as Meredith Vieira's producer. In an open letter this week, Lauer adamantly denies the allegation, saying it was mutual and completely consensual and calling Nevels a fully enthusiastic and willing partner, going on to have several more consensual sexual encounters at his New York City apartment and his office at 30 Rock until ending what he called an affair. Farrow says Nevels acknowledges the encounters, and this week she responded to Lauer, saying his statement was classic victim shaming and saying the shame in this story belongs to him. An NBC spokesperson told us this week Matt Lauer's conduct was appalling, horrific, and reprehensible, as we said at the time. That's why we fired him within 24 hours of us learning of the complaint. Our hearts break again for our colleague. George. Okay, Lindsay, thanks. And now for his first broadcast interview, the author of Catch and Kill, Ronan Farrow. Ronan, thanks for coming Good in to be here. this morning. Let's, see, let's start out with that denial from Matt Lauer. He uh, detailed an angry denial. He calls your story categorically false, that this was a consensual affair. The accusation of rape is defamatory, designed to sell a book. And obviously, in the book, we include his exact thinking without violating any ground rules. We had very strict rules about what we could reveal about what conversations we had with many of the sources in the book. Uh, the thinking of every person against whom a serious allegation is made is fully represented Did in you this talk book. To so Matt there's Lauer? nothing new there. Again, I can't answer specific questions about that, but I can say that Matt Lauer's thinking that's presented in this letter is in the book. And I think this young woman, this journalist, Brooke Nevels, presents what I found to be a persuasive response to that. The facts of her case, which are backed by documentation and eyewitnesses, suggest that there was an encounter here that she consistently has described as non-consensual. And she says, regardless of what happened before and after that, and how we interpreted that, she said no to a physical act. So if he or his allies were to say that you did in fact check those claims, extensively fact-checked, as with everything in this book. Let's go into and, and how NBC handled this as well. They say they first learned about this in November 2017. Matt was fired. We just saw that within 24 hours. Here's what Andy Lack said. Any suggestion that we knew prior to that evening or tried to cover up any aspect of Lauer's conduct is absolutely false and offensive. 
And that they're saying they, they did something as soon as they knew. So this is an important point, George. Uh, this is not what the reporting in the book suggests. We spent several years reporting this out, extensively fact-checking it. Uh, what we show in this book, with a paper trail, with documents, is that there were multiple secret settlements and non-disclosures being struck with women at but NBC News. But those were News. after the fact, weren't they, the two non-disclosures? Nope. Years before, over a period of six to seven years, a period in which NBC had previously On denied Matt Lauer? any settlements. There were seven non-disclosure agreements, multiple ones of those were with Matt Lauer accusers. This is years before this incident with Brooke Nevels and the firing. And, and, and I spoke to senior executives who were told about those earlier incidents. With Matt Lauer? Indeed. They definitely know. So when they say this, the first they heard about any allegations about Matt Lauer were after the fact, were after November two, 2017? I'll let the facts in the book speak for themselves, but I think that is difficult to believe when you look at the documents and records. Did Brooke or her attorneys use the words rape or sexual assault when they went to NBC? We're very careful about laying out exactly what happened and what she said when she went to them. She unambiguously described a rape or a sexual assault. Like many trauma victims, she was not ready to use those words. So her attorney did what is done very often in criminal investigations, in cases like this where someone complains at a company, asked a, a clear series of questions that elicited answers that, without any doubt, said, this is non-consensual, and even stopped the proceedings to say, this was non-consensual, we want to be clear. The other big allegation in the book, NBC preventing you from finishing your reporting on Harvey Weinstein. Uh, Andy Lack says, this is a fundamentally untrue picture. Noah Oppenheim, I'd have to write my own book to refute all the ways Ronan willfully distorts our interactions. Their basic point is they assigned you the story, but you didn't come back with one that met their standards, including an on-the-record accusation. Look, I'm confident in the reporting in the book. I'll let it stand on its own. But the point here is not that we did indeed have multiple named women in every draft of this story. We did indeed have a taped confession from Harvey Weinstein. Uh, the point is that they ordered a hard stop to reporting. They told me and a producer working on this that we should not take a single call. They told us to cancel interviews. The question for years has been why? Because every journalist at that institution didn't understand why. And I think the book answers that question. This was a company with a lot of secrets. Is their point, is their point bolstered by the fact that it took you, what, another seven weeks to get this story in shape for The New Yorker? That's inaccurate. We lay out the timeline in the book. It was briefer than that. There was actually a very brief period of about a month where The New Yorker greenlit the story and then got it out as quickly as humanly possible. But the argument has never been that the story had no room to grow, that there couldn't be additional reporting. It's that they halted reporting, and this book explains why. Well, that is the big question, why. I mean, you lay out the suggestion that Harvey Weinstein was blackmailing NBC News. Multiple sources do say that, and the way in which that's framed is very careful. All of NBC's denials are in this book. We fact-checked for many hours with them. That said, it is indisputable, based on the evidence in this book, that there was a chain of secret settlements at this company that were covered up with victims of harassment and assault, some of them about Lauer, some about others in the company. This was a pattern. It was concealed from journalists there. And George, that's bigger than NBC. It's bigger than these executives. These are not highly public figures. The reason this reporting was important is because this is a pattern in media, in law, in politics. Institutions that conceal abuse of this type let people get hurt. And but that's something did, we should all care about. did they allow it because they were afraid information about Matt Lauer was going to get out? That is what the extensive conversations, and transcripts, and documents presented in this book suggest. Okay, Ronan, stick with us because we're going to have more on Harvey Weinstein's attempts to intimidate you and the spying on you. That's when we come back. Thanks, George. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.